Good evening. If you're just joining us, we will be starting in a minute or so. This listening session is being simultaneously interpreted in Spanish, Russian, Vietnamese, and Cantonese. If any of you would like to have this webinar simultaneously interpreted, please follow the instructions on the slide. Click the interpretation box in the bottom Zoom bar. Choose your preferred language. The presenter's voice will be lowered when the interpreter speaks over it. You can choose to mute the presenter if you want. These instructions are also in the chat box. Please note that we cannot look into or resolve any person's claim or business's issue in this public forum. And it is not safe to put your personal information like a social security number or business identification number in the chat or question boxes in this public recorded webinar that will be posted online. Now, I'd like to turn over this listening session to Lindsay Leahy, the Unemployment Insurance Division Director for the Oregon Employment Department. And so go ahead, Lindsay. Thanks, PJ. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to today's listening session. During the next 90 minutes, we would like to gather your perspectives on the updates to the availability for work eligibility requirement for unemployment insurance benefits as we explore the possibility of making these changes permanent. The purpose of unemployment insurance benefits is to provide a temporary partial wage replacement to individuals who are out of work through no fault of their own. These benefits help keep individuals in their local communities, create an available workforce for local businesses and provide economic stability to local economies. We saw this in action during the pandemic, where from March 15th of 2020 through September 20th of 2021, unemployment benefits provided an infusion of over $10.9 billion into Oregon's economy. Unemployment insurance benefits are paid weekly based on the individual meeting all eligibility criteria, including being able to work, being available for work, and actively seeking work for each week that an individual claims benefits. The temporary amendment to Oregon Administrative Rule 471-030-0036 modifies the availability for work requirement so that workers who are seeking shift-based work only need to be available for at least one shift instead of a minimum of two shifts, which was the requirement under the old rule. For work that isn't shift-based, workers need to be available for full-time work. In most occupations, this is 40 hours per week. However, for some occupations, full-time work is fewer than 40 hours. Under the old rule, a worker needed to be available for work during all the usual days and hours of the week customary for the type of work they were seeking which depending on the industry could add up to that individual needing to be available for more than 40 hours in any given week. We have notified people receiving benefits about this rule amendment and our online temporary eligibility rule FAQ has more information. To find the FAQ, go to unemployment.oregon.gov and click on frequently asked questions then scroll down to temporary availability rule change. If you would like to read the rule itself, please visit oregon.gov backslash employee backslash agency and click on OED administrative rules. I will wrap up by saying as a result of the pandemic, the labor market today looks and acts differently from what it did prior to March of last year and the Employment Department wants to keep step with those changes by updating our eligibility requirements while continuing to remain within the federal framework for the program. And we believe this change helps us do that. I look forward to hearing your comments and questions 
and I thank you for your participation today. And back over to you, PJ. Thank you, Lindsay. Now we're going to move on to the details about today's listening session. This webinar is being recorded and we will post it to our webinar page after this listening session has ended. If you would like to make a comment or ask a question, please raise your hand and I will call on people in the, in the order the hands are raised. Since this listening session is limited to 90 minutes, you will have up to five minutes to comment. We reserve the right to reduce the comment time to up to two minutes if a large number of people would like to comment. That way we can be sure everyone has an opportunity to be heard. If there is limited participation, we may end the webinar early if there are no more questions or comments. Remember, do not put personal or business information into the Q&A or chat box. For help with a claim issue, please use our online contact us form at unemployment.oregon.gov or call 1-877-345-3484. If you do not want to speak, a question you would like to answer, please put your question in the Q&A box. Please remember, we cannot answer questions specific to your claim. Do not enter your social security number or business identification number in the Q&A or chat boxes as this recording will be available online. If you have te technical difficulties or unable to ask your question, please send an email to oedcommunications at employ.oregon.gov and we'll assist you. Our unemployment insurance listening session panelists are available to answer your questions. They are Lisa, Tim, Carol, and Zulamar. If you have a question in Spanish, please type it into the chat or raise your hand so that Zulamar may translate. If you have a question in another language, please type it into the chat and we will follow up with you after the webinar. We are now beginning the comment and questions section. I will call on you in order. Please make sure that you state your full name and tell us if you are making a comment or asking a question. If you are joining us by phone, be sure to hit star six to unmute yourself when you are called on so you can comment. If technical difficulties prevent you from asking your question or making a comment, please email oed underscore communications at employ.oregon.gov. And a reminder, we cannot look into or resolve any person's claim in this public forum, and it is not safe to put your personal information in the chat or question boxes in this public recorded webinar that will be posted online. I will now pause to give people time to raise their hands. Remember, use our contact us online form or call us for help with your personal or business claim issues. Okay, remember to raise your hand. Okay, so um, the, the first question we have is from, and if I mispronounce your name, I apologize in advance, Paloma Sparks, if you would like to comment or ask your question. Paloma? My question, yes, my question is whether or not employees will be required to list the shifts that they will be available for under this rule um, when they are filing a claim with uh, the division. Okay, and I will um, have Tim, if you would mind answering that question. Um, sure. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the the shifts that an individual must be available for will be provided to them based on a conversation uh, with the individual and employment department staff. Uh, they'll receive a, a written uh, handout that uh, explains their basic requirements and what they need to do to be eligible to meet those availability requirements each week. 
So they won't necessarily need to provide their information on a week to week basis, uh, but that conversation will take place at the beginning of their claim. Uh, and um, if things change over the course of their claim, then additional conversations would take place uh, with that individual. Paloma, do you have a follow-up comment or question? Yeah, so it seems like the rule would allow an employee to, or a potential employee, to turn down work sort of ad hoc um, without there being sort of a consistent reason for why they would turn down certain shifts. Um, is there pl some plan? It doesn't. It doesn't quite make sense to me how they their shift availability would be limited, um, sort of at the front end. So let's say somebody, <clears throat> norm their previous job, they worked nights, and they are offered a position, a night position, and they turn that down. Are they still eligible for benefits? Um, so it would, cases like that uh, would be, you know, the, the example provided is somewhat case specific. Um, so, you know, those would likely have to go through our adjudication process. Uh, generally speaking, however, uh, you know, uh, the conversation between the staff person and the individual, uh, if there are certain barriers that would prevent them from working a particular shift, uh, we would develop a plan with that individual uh, such that based off of the work that they're willing to seek and accept, uh, they make themselves available for uh, at least one shift or 40 hours during the week. Um, if an individual uh, ends up turning down work, uh, then uh, we would still uh, investigate those issues and make a determination as to whether or not they would be eligible for benefits. And Paloma, I'll add, this is Lindsay. Um, claimants are required to right now to complete what we're calling orientation activities at our work source offices when they file their claim after they, I believe it's two weeks, um, uh, within two weeks of um, claim, filing their initial claim. And so at that orientation, that's when they speak with one of our representatives and they look at the type of work they're seeking. They provide them with available information for you know, what's available to them in uh, their particular labor market. And they'll have that conversation about um, what they need to be available for, if that makes sense. So it is customized uh, for the individual. And then if, at, just as Tim said, there's an issue that comes up or we hear from an employer that people are refusing offers of work, we, might, we would adjudicate those issues case by case. Paloma, do you have a follow-up or comment you'd like to make? Not at this time. Thank you. So uh, we do have more people in the audience. And so a reminder that if you do not want to ask a question, you can put your question in the chat or the Q&A box and we will ask it for you. So we will we'll hold on because more people may be joining us. And so we want to give people a chance to ask questions. And so I will give it a minute and then I will check again and see if any other individuals would like to make a comment or ask a question.
And we realize that some people may be wrapping up their work and will need some time to log in. So that is why we are having the pause so people can um, still comment if they desire. Okay, so, so we're joining us. And so what I'd like to say for those who are just joining us now, if you would like to ask a question, please raise your hand and then we will call on you in the order that you raise your hand. If you prefer to ask a question another way, you can put that question in the chat and I will go ahead and I will um, read out the question and a member of our team will respond. Remember, if you would like to ask a question, you can raise your hand or you can put the question in the chat box. So if you have a question or comment, you can raise your hand and we will call on people in the order their hands are raised. If you would prefer to have us answer the question without you having to um, come on this platform, you can put it in the chat and we will then answer the question that way or we will be able to record your comment that way. Lindsay, for the people who have joined, would you mind just giving a quick overview again? Because then they may have missed your introduction, not the entire introduction, but can you give a, a quick overview? Absolutely. So I will just jump in and say um, the, so, the temporary amendments is to Oregon Administrative Rule 471-030-0036. And what it's doing is modifying the availability for work requirement so that workers who are seeking shift-based work only need to be available for at least one shift instead of a minimum of two shifts, which was the old requirement. And then for workers who don't look, who aren't looking or seeking for shift based or non shift based work, that's what they're looking for, just regular work um, that doesn't have shifts associated with it. Um, they just need to be available for full time work. And so some occupations, uh, 40 hours is generally considered full time work. And for other occupations, it's less than 40 hours. Now, under our old rule, the requirement is that the worker needed to be available for work during all the usual days and hours of the week customary for the type of work they were seeking, which depending on the industry, that could add up to that individual needing to be available for more than 40 hours in any given week. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. 
Okay. So again, um, if how you can comment or ask a question is you can raise your hand and then I will call on you in the order that your hand is raised. If you're more comfortable, you can put your question or your comment in the chat and then we can I can read that and there can be a response from one of our experts or if it is a comment, then that way it will be in the record. And as a reminder, if anyone is, is listening in and they have a question and they came because they had a question about their personal or, or, or a business claim, we want to remind you that this is not the form for that. And if help is needed with a claim issue, that um, you can use the our online contact us form, which can be found at unemployment.oregon.gov, or you can call us at 877-345. Three four eight four. And to ask a question, you you just you raise your hand, and I will call on you. Or if you have a comment, and if you would like to put that comment in the chat box, or into or um, or if you comment or your question, we will then respond to it that way too. So we'd like to just remind you also that we do have additional listening sessions coming up. Uh, we have two more worker focus sessions, uh, October 26th at noon on Tuesday and November 9th at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. And the employer focus sessions are Wednesday, November 3rd at noon and Wednesday, November 17th at 9 a.m. But you still have time um, to, to make a comment or to ask a question during this listening session. And how you do that is you can raise your hand and then we will call on people in the order or hands are raised or you could put your comment or question in the chat box and I will read that and if it's a question then what a member of our team a panel of experts will be able to respond So there are two ways to 
comment or ask a question in this listening session. The first is to raise your hand and then I will call on you and you can ask a question or you can make your comment. Um, if you're more comfortable, you can also put your comment or question in the chat box and then I will read it. And that way the our experts can respond to you if it is a question. So a reminder about this listening session, if you would like to comment or ask a question, you raise your hand and I will call on you and a member of our expert panel here will be able to answer your question if it's a question or we'll be able to hear your comment. If you would rather put your comment or question in the chat box, you can do that and then I will read it. And if it is a question, it will be answered by one of our expert panel members. So we have a question, and this question is, is from Paloma Sparks. And the question is, can you articulate why this rule is needed? Seems a fundamental shift in work that hasn't really changed. Yes, more people work from home, more, but that doesn't impact shift availability. So um, Lindsay, do you wanna answer that question? I'm gonna, un you un there you go. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, was, I was reading the question. Um, and so what we were noticing and what we were hearing from workers and also employers is that during the pandemic, um, there, th we've gained additional flexibilities. So um, you have, um, more of a wider variety of shifts, there's remote work, there's other things like that. So it, fe it felt like we were putting more barriers um, than our um, on claimants for who are seeking work, then um, that were more than what were needed to help them actually re-engage and get back to work. Um, in addition, you've got um, folks that um, are impacted by COVID-19, uh, and so they might or they might um, either be caring for somebody or they have, um, you know, their child care center is closed down, and so one um, uh, parent might be available for work. Um, you know, during the day while the other parent is, you know, watching their child or helping them with online schooling. And then that other parent that was caring during the day would then be able to work at night. So the first parent would then be able to um, be there to take care of their child. And so um, it's both kind of responding to the pandemic, but then also looking at employment flexibilities and greater opportunities for work, and then also trying to help people um, get back to work sooner and not deprive um, uh, them of unemployment insurance unnecessarily. So making sure, again, they're looking for work, they're available for work, and we're not limiting the their ability to um, accept uh, suitable work. And by adding those pieces to the welcome orientation, so before we were a little bit more generic, now we're doing that more specific, honed in what you need to be available for. Um, it gives them additional supports, but also guidance on uh, availability requirements. Thank you, Lindsay. And, uh, Paloma, if you have a follow-up question to that, please let me know. 
And I want to remind everyone that to ask a question there are, or make a comment, there are two ways you can do it. The first is to raise your hand and then you can go ahead and ask your question or, or comment. And the second is to use our chat box and then um, I will then read the question or I will read the comment. If it is a question, then one of our expert panelists will answer it for you. And a reminder that we do not give any personal or business information when you are making a comment or asking a question. And for people who need help claim issues, whether it's business question or it is a, um, a personal question, then you can use our online contact us form at unemployment.oregon.gov or you can call 1-877-345-3484. PJ, I did get a ping. Um, another thing that we're looking at, because not necessarily the pandemic, that also the, the precipice of looking at these, we are looking at the eligibility rules to figure out, you know, what best fits with process improvements and all the other things that we're doing. It's just another piece of that. And we actually haven't changed the availability rules in over a decade. And so um, there's the nature of work has changed in the past 10 years, not significantly definitely in the past like 19 months, but also just over the span of time, it's time for a refresh. So I thought I would add that comment. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah. And while we're waiting for um, other comments or questions, I'm gonna remind people that um, we do have more, uh, more listing sessions for the worker focused sessions are Tuesday, October 26 at noon and Tuesday, November 9th at 6 p.m. The employer focus sessions, Wednesday, November 3rd at noon and Wednesday, November 17th at 9 a.m. So to ask your question or make your comment, please raise your hand so we can call on you to ask the question or make a comment or you can always use, use our chat box and I will then read the comment or question and then a member of our team will be able to respond if it is a question. This listening session gives you two opportunities to ask a question or make a comment. The first is you can raise your hand and you will be called on in the order you raise your hand. And if it is a question, we will be able to respond to you. Or you may choose to use the chat box. You could place your question or comment in the chat box. I will read it. And if it is a question, then a member of our expert panelist team will be able to answer that for you.
So we will go until 640. And so I encourage you, if you have questions or comments, to raise your hand so we can call on you or to use our chat box so we can, I can read your question or comment. And reminder that we will have additional listing sessions coming up. So it is the worker focus session. That there are two more. One is Tuesday, October 26th at noon. The next one is Tuesday, November 9th at 6 p.m. The two employer focus sessions are Wednesday, November 3rd at noon and Wednesday, November 17th at 9 a.m. We have one more minute where you can ask a question or make a comment, and there are two ways to do this. The first is you can raise your hand, and we will call on you, and you can make your comment or ask your question. The second way is to put your comment or question in the chat box. I will read it, and if it is a question, then one of a member of our panel will be able to answer that question for you. Well, this concludes our listening session comment period. There are additional listening sessions available. And again, those dates and times are for the worker focus sessions, Tuesday, October 26th at noon and Tuesday, November 9th at 6 p.m. The employer focus session are Wednesday, November 3rd at noon and Wednesday, November 17th at 9 a.m. And you can register online at unemployment.oregon.gov forward slash webinars. This listening session was recorded and we will post it on the Employment Department's webinar page at unemployment.oregon.gov forward slash webinars. Thank you for taking the time to provide feedback and for participating today. We appreciate it very much. Have a good night.